Access Credit Union has always been at the heart of our community through good and bad times. We want to continue to play our part in helping our community through the COVID-19 crisis. As businesses reopen, we encourage our community to work together by staying local, borrowing locally and spending locally. Access Credit Union is here to help. Close your eyes and pull like a dog. <laughs> and a new Irish record for Phil Healy, 22.99. Christy Cooney hands over the Sam McGuire Cup to Graham Canty, Cork All-Ireland Champions for the seventh time ever. Hello and welcome to the Star Sport Podcast. My name is Jack McCarran of the Southern Star and I'm joined as always by Star Sport Editor Kieran McCarty. On today's podcast we're going to be reflecting on what was undoubtedly the busiest GAA weekend of 2020 and maybe the busiest GAA weekend ever in West Cork. Later on the podcast, we'll be looking back on Bandon's impressive win over Clyder Rovers in the Senior A Championship and speaking to dual, pe- dual player Mark Sugru, who kicked seven points on Friday night. We'll also be joined by Dave Shannon of Donovan Rossa, who kicked six points on Saturday afternoon as the Skibbereen men ran riot in their 4-22 to 1-5 win over St. Nick's. But Kieran, let's start by looking at the weekend as a whole. We reckon there are about... 40 clubs from West Cork and Mid Cork in action from Friday to Saturday. So before we go too deep into any of the major headlines, you were back covering some of the games over the weekend. So how was it to be back out there? Did you enjoy yourself? Did you you realise how much you'd missed it when you were actually on the sideline? First off, Jack, it was great to get out of the house. It was just an escape from home for a couple of hours. So that was... That was brilliant. That was worth it. That was worth it alone. But no, it was super to have the, the GA back, like you said there, possibly the busiest weekend. Well, it was the busiest weekend since I've been involved with the Southern Star. An incredible amount of games from County Level to Carberry to Muskery and so on. And Camogie Championship, ladies football, you name it. it. It was on this weekend and every club was in action. So um, it was great to be on the sideline. I know it's the, the new norm at the moment with the with the new COVID-19 regulations in place. But as far as I could see, the games I was at last weekend, everything ran ran perfectly. Um, obviously, the crowds are small at the moment, but there was no hassle getting in out the grounds, the, the team's management, stewards, every, everyone abided by all the rules. So as far as I could see, everything ran pretty smoothly. And we're going to touch on exactly what's going to come up in this week's Southern Star in a little while, but it's going to be a packed one. So how are you managing to fit in all the reports? We've obviously gone up, it's the biggest Southern Star Sports section of the year. We've gone up to 28 pages and it's it's creaking, Jack. The pages are literally creaking. I'm just trying to get everything in there because it's a an incredible amount of games. And um, as we know, with the crowd limit at the moment, you might have 70 or 80 fans at all club matches. So there's a lot of fans and a lot of our listeners and readers can't get to the game. So to all those, buy the Southern Star this Thursday because we have match reports from, from all those games. So... You couldn't be at the game in person, catch up and see what happened for your club in this Thursday Southern Star. We've reports, analysis, reaction, we've everything. Um, incredibly proud of the team of reporters and photographers we have, Jack. They've put in sterling work in the weekend just gone and um, it's a really, really good sports section and um, really strong, very heavy GA content. But that's what you'd expect after such a weekend like this. And I, I think there'll be huge interest in match reports this week because everybody wants to know what everybody else was up to. And they also want to know what their own clubs were up to. So definitely this Thursday's star sports section is a pretty strong one. Okay, and Kieran, we mentioned a few minutes ago that there may have well been over 40 clubs involved in matches over the weekend. So we're not going to get a chance to touch on every game that took place. So what you might do for us now is maybe give us your top headlines from the weekend that was. Okay, I'm going to start off with the performance of the weekend. I think has to be the Newcastle senior footballers did a, a huge win, three seventeen to one seven over Island Rovers in the the West Cork Group of Days in the Cork Premier Senior Football Championship. And Newcastle hit an unanswered three eight at one stage in the second half. Newcastle semi finalist last year, great start and sets them up now for the for the next game against Castlehaven in a couple of weeks. I'm going to drop down a grade now to to the O'Donovan Ross. Uh, senior footballers who are in action in the Senior A Football Championship. 
and I was very impressed by them against St. Nick's. But the big news is they have two huge additions back with them this year. The return of Donald O'Cognett, who has missed 15 months through injury, and also Dave Shannon, um, who had transferred to a club in Wexford, but he's back as well this year. And Donald O got 2 1 against St. Nick's. Dave Shannon hit six points. So, really adding a lot of power, firepower to the skip side this season. Go down a grade again. I'm going to look a couple of grades. The Carberry Junior A Football Championship also kind of kicked into life last weekend. There was a shock loss for Tyler McCarrug. There was a defending champion St. James has got off the winning start. But I think the eye catching result there was the Kilmackaby Juniors put up 623 against Bandon. Okay, we have to take the opposition into account. But putting up 623 is a massive score. And Cork senior Damien Gore got 3 5. Daniel O'Donovan got 2 6. So Kilmackaby are already signaling their intentions this year big contenders in Carberry. Switching codes, um, fantastic to see Inneskeen get off to a winning start in the County Intermediate Camogie Championship. Of course, they've been defeated finalists in 2017 and 2019, but they had a big win over Betty Hay last Sunday, and no surprise to see Cork star Ola Cronin leading the, the way with 1-11. And I have to touch two Jack on the huge derby last weekend, obviously Castlehaven against Carberry Rangers. They brought the TG4 cameras down to County Kilty, and it didn't disappoint. Castlehaven took the bragging rights here. They won 14 points to nine. But it's worth remembering that Carberry Rangers were starting without goalkeeper Paul Shanahan, John O'Rourke, and John Hayes. So if those three players were missing, it would have been a much, much tighter game. So Ross still have a chance to regroup for their next game. Castlehaven off the winning start, but um, cracking start to the weekend. Great stuff, Kieran. Well, one of the games you were at was Bandon against Clyde Rovers, and we're going to chat to Bandon's Mark Sugru in a second, but just maybe your own thoughts from the game? Yeah, pretty impressed by Bandon, considering Clyde have been a senior team the last couple of years. Um, Bandon raced out of the blocks. Uh, at half time, they were 192 points ahead and they were well in control. Um, Clyde uh, were quite disappointing, to be honest. They had a good bit of the ball, but they just didn't, they got no joy against a very, very good Bandon uh, defence. James O'Donovan full back was really good. Peter Murphy, Caught the eye at centre back, really strong physical presence there. And then up front, Ben then had the likes of Mark Shugru, Mark O'Regan, Roland Crowley. I think the full forward line kicked 111 of Bandon's 112. Um, good, good win for Bandon. Really sets them up in their group because next up is Donnie's in a couple of weeks. And that's a that's a big West Cork derby. And the fact now Donnie's lost their opener to Fermoy, that means they're chasing a win against Bandon. But Bandon have that first win under their belts, which is so important because they're also a dual club and they're in action in the in the Senior A Hurling Championship this weekend. So Bandon needed to get off to a good start. They did. Really impressed with them. Looked really strong. There wasn't much signs of rustiness. They were quite clinical too. And a big part of that was Mark Sugru, who I caught up with a little bit earlier. We're joined in the Star Sport podcast now by Bandon dual star Mark Sugru. Mark, I was at Betty Andley on Friday night for your... This was your senior A football championship opener against Clyde. You won 112 to six points. Powerful performance by Ben and um, What were the big positives that you took from the game? Um, I suppose the, the main thing that we talked about after was that we were so clinical up front. So I know Clyde had a good bit of the ball the first 10, 15 minutes, but they, our backs were very tight. And every time we got an opportunity up front, we seemed to take it for some reason. I don't think we kicked any wide. I'd say we had one wide in the first 30 minutes, which was a great positive. And that's always what we're our kind of game plan is always around like taking the right option, you no know, stupid silly shots, things like that. So that really came to fruition there Friday night without a lot of preparation in one way. Like you said, Derek, kind of, you, I don't, you kicked maybe one wide in the first half and you were one nine to two points up at half time. And the, the game was almost done and dusted by that stage because Clyde had at the races. Were you expecting a, a tougher test from Clyde as, seen, as they have been seen over the last couple of years? Oh, 100%, yeah. When we saw our, even the way the new grading system is now, like we've got, there's a 12 teams all together in our grade. Any one of them 12 could win it. And I'd say there's six or seven who've been senior with the last five, six years. So like we were expecting a big thing from Clyde. But like I was saying, looking back in the game, Clyde had a lot of the ball in the first 10, 15 minutes, but they just, our backs were superb in the night. They gave no opportunity to shoot, no kind of no easy shots really. And everyone just put in a massive performance. I think the 1-15 to 15 were superb, especially with a few a few new fellas starting compared to 2016. I'd say we're after losing five or six from our junior and intermediate counties there. So it's great to see a few new fellas, new faces kind of 
putting their shoulder to the wheel as well, which that was a big positive out of it, I think. And um, like it was a, I think a relief for everyone that the, the GA was back last weekend. It was such a busy week for the in in the Cork County Championships for for, for you and, and the rest of your teammates to be back playing football after what just four or five months of of no games whatsoever. How fun was it to get back out on the pitch again? No, it's great. The, the main thing really is kind of that you're back training with your friends and stuff. That's the big thing, you know, the enjoyment out in the fresh air and stuff. But it was a tough three or four four months, and obviously we were sent training programs every every day, every second day, to be fair, and to, I'd say the majority of our gang kind of kept tipping away doing something, but some people may have taken it as an opportunity to do, to relax and to recharge the legs, which in our case, I think might be a bad thing either because since 2015, we've been going basically January till October, November, every single year. So I think the break might have done us a good thing, but we'll have to wait and see now in the next three or four weeks. Last Friday night was my first taste of, I suppose, the new COVID regulations around, around, um, around the GA games. And I saw you kind of getting changed in the cars beforehand. You were kind of over behind the goal. And what's the, what's that all been like? Kind of obviously the dressing rooms are closed and all these social distancing rules are in and sanitising and all that. Has that been hard to to wrap your heads around these new regulations, Mark? Uh, when it came to the match, no, not really, because we're back training you now three or four weeks, I'd say, and we're well used to that down in Bendon. That. You have to sanitise your hands going in. You have to be kind of change coming. And everyone's kind of well used to it, to be honest. When it came to a match, it didn't really make much of a difference to us. You know, physio, maybe it might be a bit awkward if it was, especially if we've got bad weather now, like for things like that, strappings and other situations. But we'll have to see what comes in the next few weeks. This win now against Clyde sets you, sets you up really well in, in your group. Um, Donnie's in a couple of weeks' time. Donnie's lost to Fermi the weekend, so they'll be looking for a win. If you get a win, it could almost put you through to the knockout stages. So all of a sudden, that's looking like a fairly big West Cork derby. Yeah, massive, yeah. And like Donnie's, even since we've been junior intermediate, we've been playing Donnie's in friendly games and there's never been much between us, to be honest. And I think it was last year we played him out in the man in the league and I think we got a goal last minute to win by a point. So like, it's literally 50-50. I don't think... I don't think we'd be favourites or they'd be favourites. It'll be very hard to call, but we'll have to wait and see. I didn't see, obviously, no one saw the demand <laughs> from my game, so it's hard to see where, where they're uh, at this time of year, too. Like, you know, but everyone's in the same boat, do you know. Before we move on to chat about the hurling, which is this weekend, I have to ask you about your own performance against Clyde. You got seven points, and you're going to claim the assist for Mark O'Regan's goal in the first half. I'm presuming you meant that that was an inch perfect pass by you in, into Mark for that goal. No, yeah, of course. Jeez. <laughs> After winning a good mark, yeah, it was a pretty pathetic effort toward, for a point, to be honest. Yeah, but it, it worked out well. Definitely, that put us, I think, one four to no score up. So I think that was the, that was definitely the changing of the game. I think it kind of deflated Clyde a bit. But it was, in fairness, that was Mark's first championship start for us, Mark Regan. So it was a great, a great start for him. Really, I think he ended up with one two. So it's great seeing people like that coming into our group, like. He played pretty well, in fairness to him. And we're going to turn out to the hurling because I suppose, Brendan, as, as a dual senior club, you're straight into hurling this weekend with a game against Charleville. Um, what, what, what are your thoughts on, on your senior hurling group first and kind of how hard then is it to kind of switch from football to hurling? Uh, I wouldn't say it's hard for us at this stage, no, because since 2015, we've had the same... 13 players that say starting in board codes so we're well used to it and as well like you were saying there in 2016 I think we went something like eight weekends in a row playing hurling football every second weekend and by the football final we were nearly dead in our feet right but it definitely worked in our favour that year the way we kept kind of rolling over week weekend to weekend after winning and we just built massive momentum and um, within our group we have two two teams that we played a good bit the last since I've been playing intermediate or senior hurling from I and Mallow, so there's never much between us. We had from I in that county final, and they're every bit as good as us. And we played Mallow in the semi with a we got a late goal that year as well. So again, there wasn't much between us. And from looking from last year, Charleville are probably the team to beat in our group, to be honest. And they kind of felt a bit unlucky not to be in the top grade next year or this year with their performances last year, but. That will be the toughest challenge, it's the charitable. So, and especially they're probably concentrating mainly on hurling, I presume. So, definitely Saturday night will be a massive test for us. So, hopefully, all our 
bodies will be recovered by then, but we'll just have to wait and see. You mentioned 2016 there, Mark, and that was obviously the year of abandon one the Premier Intermediate um, Hurling Championship and Intermediate Football Championship. So those campaigns are running side by side, like you said there, for almost two months and you kept winning and winning and winning. Like there's lessons you can take from that. Like you've been in the situation before where you have to juggle both codes in a short confined space of time. So like you, you know what to expect over the weeks ahead as you juggle the senior football and hurling championships. Yeah, 100%. But then again, like the prepara preparation we had, from 2016 to this year, obviously there's no comparison. Like, you know, we're only after three or four weeks back training, I would say max, and people are still getting fit, really. There's a big thing, you know, and it, small things like game plans, you can't really get into too much of them because, like, as you said, we had football last week, now we're on the hurling. And so the hurlers haven't seen us there for a week and a half, I'd say. So they're trying to put together a plan for us to buy into for Saturday night. And then that's where other teams that play one code might have a slight advantage, but then again, they're still only three or four weeks training as well. So we can't really tell really every, as I said, every team is in the same boat. How much importance do you place in the first game? Kind of beating Clyde in the football sets you up well for, for the rest of the football championship. Looking at the hurling against Charleville this weekend, is it almost the same mindset? Try and get that win and just set yourself up for the next two group games. That's exactly it. Yeah, we always kind of target even when the championship games were first rounds of April and we might play again until September, October, we always going to target the first game to get a good start. You know, to try and build a bit of momentum, like saying like, this is what we did well the first day out. But obviously this year, uh, it doesn't make much of it, not that much if you lose because you still have another two games to rectify, but it kind of eases the pressure slightly if you get, if you get the first win. But the main thing, it's about performance and kind of what your 15 are like working together and, what you can work on for the next two games. What's the plan so this week, Mark? And if you've, like we mentioned now, Charlotte this weekend in the hurling and it's for my after that in the hurling again. So you have a block here of hurling. Is it just throw yourself into hurling for the next couple of weeks and park the football till the week before the Donnie's game? Yeah. I don't know, is that a good or a bad thing? But that's the way we've been doing it the last few years, yeah. So basically we'll, we haven't touched the hurling the last week and a half up till yesterday, basically Sunday. So the next two weeks now will be all hurling, hurling, yeah. And then, back to kick a few footballs in two weeks' time. So, But again, we have we have a few young fellas coming into the panel now who are just playing football, or we might have a few who are just playing hurling, so they'll be doing a bit of training in the background, but the people playing both, they won't be football training at all, no, it'll be definitely all hurling. How much have you enjoyed getting back playing GA again? I know we've talked earlier about it's great that the GA is back, but for you on a, on a personal level, just to be back playing football and hurling again, training with the lads out most evenings, what's that been like? No, it's Great, yeah. Like, to be honest, at the start, a lot of people were kind of saying, is, is it worth going back with the current climate and how safe is it? But when, we're, when you're back in it now and you see all the protocols that people are taking, taking care, washing, washing their hands, etc., it is brilliant, to be fair. Yeah. And back with your... So we've been together since 2010, this group, 2011, really, and it was just great bonds there between all of us. So it is great to be back, yeah. Did you keep an eye on the other senior A football results from the weekend? And is there any team you're kind of looking out for in the, I suppose not jumping ahead of yourselves, but kind of any other team you're checking out as, co as contenders for the senior A title? Any kind of performances or results catch your eye? Uh, maybe a couple, yeah. But like we, we kind of just scraped into this grade, really, the last game of the season last year. Uh, I remember being over in Old Trafford at the game and we were looking at results on Twitter saying, uh, I think St. Michael's and some team were in the county final last year and there was if a certain team won we'd stay down intermediate and if the other team won our points would be enough to keep us up there so we're kind of lucky to be there but some of the teams like I was saying there like Clyde will still be and when they get things going again they'll be a massive test for any team so they've had six, seven years experience senior uh, Skibbereen obviously put in a massive performance look like with the results and again they have I've played Skibbereen with Carberry and we barely beat them in a division side with top players, so they should, they're probably one of the top teams to watch out for. And A Rogue have been a top team in two of the last few years, but it, I don't think it's possible to call it this year. Anyone could win it the way the way the fixtures are and with preparations and that, especially with 12 teams. So I think the new system is super, to be honest. Even look at the, the grade above us to 12 teams, it's kind of more of a championship now. You know, you have, you might have had a couple of teams last year who were technically senior teams, which you'd say, are they really senior teams? But I think the way the county board have divided every 
grade now, which looks a lot more competitive, to be honest. Before we finish up, and it's great to have another Man United fan on the podcast. And like you mentioned there, you were at, at Old Trafford at, at a game last year. Um, in the office, I'm surrounded by Liverpool fans, so I don't get the chance to talk about Man United too much. But it was a good weekend for Bandon beating Clyde. Good weekend for United beating Leicester and getting into the into the Champions League for next season. Just on things at, at Old Trafford, just having a look up Mark for us. We might be in the doldrums for too much longer. Yeah, hopefully not. Obviously, that was a great weekend in Bend and End, Man United win. So, a few close friends who were all Man United fans as well. So, we try and avoid the Liverpool lads for a, a few weeks anyway. So, we're, we're, we're lucky the, the pubs and stuff like that are closed, so we don't bump into them that much. <laughs> Is there any, any Liverpool fans in, in the Bend and team? Any fellas who've been crawling the last couple of weeks? There's a couple of people there, yeah. Ronan Crawley be a Liverpool fan now. He'll be talking rubbish to us some nights, yeah. But... No, we don't have that many of them, to be honest. Yeah, but again, obviously, all their jerseys come out when they start winning things. Like, so you'd see, you'd see the a few jerseys around the J pitch now, right? Which you haven't seen in since I've been on the J pitch anyway. So, yeah. I think we'd have to wait in the long grass by our time and just wait for for a couple yeah. of years. So, ho- hopefully, roads will be reversed. But we are Mark. Thank you so much for joining us on the podcast. Congratulations on last weekend, and best of luck in the weeks ahead. Cheers. Thanks, Millie. Care. Great stuff from Mark there. And before we chat to Dave Shannon of O'Donovan Rossa, I'd just like to take a brief pause to talk about our sponsors. The Star Sport Podcast is, of course, brought to you by Access Credit Union, your trusted local financial partner. Just recently, I went through the process of opening a current account with Access Credit Union, and I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that it's changed my life. I was able to open the account online during lockdown, which made the process completely hassle-free and it was made even easier by the great support provided by Access Credit Union team leader, Amanda O'Sullivan, who joins me now. Amanda, I understand you can now apply for a credit union loan online as well. Thanks, Jack. Yeah, you can. If you thought applying for your current account was easy, um, you'll be delighted when you come to us for your car loan. Um, You can apply online just as long as you're registered for your online banking. A couple of clicks and it comes to us here in Access Credit Union. The personal touch still isn't lost. We'll still bring you back and discuss the loan with you. Um, and you can upload any supporting documents you needed, your uh, payslips, bank statements, that sort of thing. Um, we attach them here to your loan, assess the loan, and you can draw it down online. So we aim to do that all within 24 to 48 hours, depending on when you submit your documents. Um, and I suppose it was something that was in the pipeline for a while, but with COVID-19, it sped us, sped us up to, to provide the service. Um, and it's really worked out well for us and you know for members being able to access their funds and still draw down their loan it's been it's been a great asset to us really and to the community i suppose yeah um typically people always have to come into the credit union to draw down their loan and you know for young people who may not be living in the area anymore we were inaccessible then so now we're back back in the market for these these members again um, and hopefully they will they will support us as we are supporting local businesses. And you know, with every 10 euros spent in the locality, it generates 40 euros for the local economy. So in turn, the interest that you're paying on your loan in your local credit union goes back into your local economy. So you know, everyone's helping each other with this. Great stuff. Thanks very much, Amanda. And don't forget, Access Credit Union is your trusted local financial partner. Access your money 24/7 from anywhere in the world with an Access Credit Union current account and enjoy all the benefits while keeping your money local. Now on Saturday afternoon in Brinny, O'Donovan Rossa ran riot as they beat St. Nick's 4-22 to 1-5. In a few moments, we're going to hear from Dave Shannon who was donning the skibbery in red in a championship game for the first time since 2016. But Kieran, he wasn't the only man making a welcome return on Saturday. No, um, great to see Donal Oak had it back in skibbering colours, Jack. Um, uh, Donal Oak tore his cruciate, ruptured his ACL in a challenge game against Valley Rovers on May 12th, 2019. So he's had to wait a long time for his comeback. And this was his first full competitive game and he lasted the 60 minutes. Um, Donal Oak, obviously, we all know he was involved with the Cork Senior Footballers before. Really good footballer. Um, big leader for skib on and off the field. So it's a huge addition to have Donal Oak back. And... He kicked 2-1 and he set up the other two goals. Um, they were playing in wing forward, kind of a free roll. And you know, he got through the game really, really well. He'll obviously have been a bit sore and tired on, on Sunday morning. But um, the main thing is that Skip of Donog had it back on the pitch. And that was one of the big positives from the win against St. Nick's. Um, 
skip it up for 22 but we have to temper this with the fact that St. Nick's were absolutely dreadful. There were, I hadn't seen a team as disorganised in, in a long time. Um, Skip could have won by what they wanted to win by. It was really men against boys. Um, kind of, uh, but that, in a way, it shouldn't take away from Skip because also what Skip did is they didn't let up. They scored more in the second half than they, they did in the first half. And they went out to kind of, I suppose, signal their intentions for the season ahead. And, Skib with the team they have should be contenders for the senior A football title this year. And I'm quite interested to watch them too because I suppose over the last couple of years in the old Cork Senior Football Championship, they were always going to dare their abouts. They were never going to win it, but they weren't um, poor enough to get relegated either because they were a team in transition. And what we're starting to see now is the kind of uh, a new Skib team emerge. Kind of they brought these 221 teams together, the latest team from from 2018, 2019, and the county winning team from 2011. So you've um, you've the nucleus of quite a young skip team there at the moment, and it's it was quite exciting to it's quite exciting for them to see this team in action because as far as I know, that was the first time last Saturday that they had everyone available and fit. And they, so like I said, they were up 4-22. Don Low played well. Dave Shannon played well. Kevin Davis, as always, was a threat. One seven. Like the look of Elliot Connolly, they played him wing forward, they brought him out there, and she says, Elliot has paced the board, and he caused them some amount of, tr- of trouble, and um, he can travel with the ball. So they have a lot of attacking threat going forward. They weren't tested defensively, and um, they have a couple of good defenders there too. The likes of Paulie Crowley is a very experienced defender there in, in the half back line. So um, good start for Skib. They know a lot, lot tougher tests lie ahead than Bellingiri in a couple of weeks. Um, and Bellingiri are already in a must-win position because they lost to St. Michael's. So it'll be a tougher test for Skib, but it was the ideal start. They got through it unscathed, no injuries, two points on the board, big, spo- big score put up. And Dave Shannon, who I caught up with a bit earlier, was one of the main men for Skib last Saturday. Dave, uh, this was your first game back in Ross's raid in, in a couple of years. Um, obviously, I don't know Ross got the better of St. Nick's fairly emphatically last Saturday. How was it like lining out with Skip Reid once more? Ah, yeah, it was uh, it was brilliant. No, brilliant to be back. No, in fairness, um, first championship game since 2016 with Skip Reid, so it was delighted to get back and very important to get the first win on the board. Your journey has taken you from Skip Reid, obviously, up to Wexford, and you were playing your club football up there for a couple of years, and you were involved with the Wexford um, intercounty setup too. But what's brought you back down to Skip Reid this year? Um, well, I suppose first of all. Uh, with Skibreen being demoted last year, so, so down to Senior B, uh, main aim now we get trying to get back up to the main main division. So that would be one of our main decisions, and uh, also uh, be trying to get back towards Cork maybe in the future with work boys. So I did my stint in Wexford, so maybe over the next uh, couple of years or so, I'll be moving back towards Cork direction. And is it nice too to be back in with the lads you've grown up with? Obviously, with Skib, underage, you won a minor and under 21 county. So to get back with that that core group of lads again, it must be nice for you to kind of, I suppose, reconnect with them again. Ah, yeah, it was, a, it was amazing, really. Um, to be honest, I didn't really think I missed it as much until I got, got back out onto the pitch and back training with the lads and stuff. And uh, it's then really that you realise how much you missed the game and stuff. Um, it's just a different feeling, I suppose, playing for a different club that you didn't grow up for and stuff. So there is a bit of a different feeling, right? But uh, yeah, it was great to get back, yeah. Watching you in action against St. Nick's the last day, just it struck me the Dave Shannon I was watching last Saturday. It's a different Dave Shannon to the, to the last time I saw you playing for Skib. You're, you're almost like a new footballer, kind of. You'd, uh, you, you've obviously benefited from your time at Wexford in the inter-county setup. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's a lot of people saying that, right? A uh, bit of a different shape, all right? Uh, be a lot fitter now than when I was playing back in 2016 now, so... Yeah, it's positive. Uh, been a bit of a huge ride for training with down here in Wexford and stuff, and uh, progress through life and stuff, and just grow up a small bit and start to concentrate on my fitness now, maybe more than my lifestyle. And you'll be back up and down. So you're 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 stationed as a guard in Gorey, is it? Oh, no, in Iscarty, sorry. So you're up and down between between Dare and, and Skibbereen, is it? Yeah, at the moment I'm travelling up and down. Uh, just like can only get down kind of uh, maybe once a week, so either maybe down for a game or for a training session. Either or, uh, it's about three and a half hours down, so it'd be a seven hour round trip for a training session there or a match, so it's fairly tough in the body right at the moment. 
that's dedication and commitment if, if ever I heard it. But you kind of get the feeling that there's something kind of could happen with this Gib group at the moment. Like it's been a, I suppose, a team in transition the last couple of years. But there's a there's a nucleus of a very good team there now at the moment, Dave. I suppose you've the two hundred twenty one teams, the team you won the county with back in, I think it was a twenty eleven, and the and the kind of the more recent under twenty one team. So can you sense yourself that this team is a team that can go places? Ah, uh, yeah. We'll hope see over the next couple of years. Uh, as you said yourself, it is in transition. Uh, we know ourselves we're not not there yet and not nearly there, but by our time, hopefully, we'll get there. Um, it is a massive change over the last couple of years. Like since I played last with Skib, there's only a, a few names left. Uh, so like all the lives are different. So it's like being with a new team really. Uh, it's fresh. So everyone's very excited. Very excited moment. You got off to the best possible start against St. Nick's last weekend. Um, proper Hughes score. I think it was 4.22 you put up. What, what, what are the big positives to take from that performance? Uh, I suppose the way we kind of put away the game early. Uh, we got a good few chances early on and we took them. Uh, we started started very well with a high, high intensity and we kept it going through. So uh, we're kind of very pleased right the way we didn't take the foot off the pedal at any stage. So we never let them back into it really, thank, thankfully. Like you said there, like you were so on top, and I can't remember the score at half time, but you were obviously well out the gate. But in that second half, you kept your foot on Nick's throat, like you didn't let up. You were going for goals. I think you got he scored more in the second half than you did in the first half. So was that something consciously that you wanted to finish the game strong? Yeah, um, I think we won one thirteen score in the first half. I think, and uh, we just kind of set ourselves a few goals and stuff that, and a few targets that we were looking to aim for, and uh, just to keep ourselves motivated throughout the game and. We hit those targets and maybe exceeded a few of them right in fairness over. So very happy there. One of the other big pluses last Saturday was obviously the comeback of Don Low Cotton. He hadn't played in May 12th, 2019, ironically at Brinney in a in a challenge game. And it was superb to see him back the last day. And he, we we saw glimpses and flashes of why Don Log is so good. Um it's just great to see him back in the pitch. Yeah, absolutely. Uh Jesus, he's an amazing footballer. Um I didn't realize it was so long either, and I don't think he did either until he heard the stats about it and it was in Brinny, right? But uh, thankfully he got through it. And yeah, he looked, he looked very good. He looked sharp and he's looking forward to the season as well. And winning the first game in, in the new group stage format that's in the county championship this year, it sets you up for the next two games against Bellingiri and St. Michael's. So um, how important was it to get that first win and to get the two points on the board? A uh, big time, yeah. It's just always very important to get winning. But as you've kind of seen over the years, winning is kind of gives a lot of momentum and it becomes a habit after a while. So, yeah, it's massive to get the first win on the board and then look forward to the next game. Looking at the Senior A Football Championship as a whole, it, it, it looks fierce competitive. I was, like say, Michael's obviously won the last day. Aero Oak had a good win. There's some good teams in there. It looks like a, a very competitive grade, grade, Dave. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, like the Aero Oak, Kish Game, St. Michael's, there's Bandon, there's Fermoy, and they're all named a few teams, <laughs> Bantry Blues as well. Like, there's a lot of them there have a great chance and it is highly competitive, right? And I suppose you've had the opportunity too to build a bit of momentum, get a couple of wins under your belt and drive on from there, especially with the championship being in such a confined space. There is that possibility and chance to, to build up a head of steam. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the farmer kind of looks looks as if, if you get, get a winning role and stuff going, that it should hopefully build momentum towards the, the later stages in the tournament. Like So it is important to get your first win on the board, yeah. And I see two just switching sports for a second. You're obviously a, b- a big road bowler. You've a you've a fairly big <coughs> score coming up this week in the Carberry Junior A, have you? Yeah, uh, I threw my first first score there last weekend. So I uh, played uh, Tony Sullivan last weekend, and I had John Clano next round. So I'm back in action to road bowling as well. You've heard like of dual stars, but I think you take the biscuit between rugby, football, and 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 and, and road bowling. How do you manage to how do you manage to juggle them all over the years? Yeah, I don't know really. I suppose they were kind of taking from each other, really, in a way. I suppose, but uh, I didn't. I didn't manage to kind of compete at them fairly well in a way. But uh, they do. They do take from each other, and uh, they are missing training of one for another. And sometimes I suppose it doesn't really work out. But you kind of just have to do the best you can, really, and make make much time for everything. What's your plan for the next couple of weeks, Dave? Obviously the. The next game against Ballingiri is until mid-August. I think it's two weeks this weekend. So is the plan for you to travel up and down, keep training away or, or what's happening? Yeah, uh, keep the foot on the gas as I feel I'd say. Um, our, with my work schedule now, we're working four days on, four days off. 
So I'd be hoping to get them to Skibreen and me four days off there, maybe get in one to two sessions. So whether that be two trainings in a match or a challenge match, uh, it depends just where the day is like. So, uh, yeah, we're getting down every week or so, hopefully. And just to touch on before I let you go, something you kind of mentioned earlier about the last time you played with Skib, there was such, I suppose, a turnover of players. And to see some of those young fellas, like the likes of Elliot Connolly and the Fitzgeralds and these lads, like they're, they're cracking footballers. Like the kind of, that conveyor belt of talent is Skib is strong. And it's great to see these fellas winning games now at senior championship level because it's all building towards something. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, there's some very young lads on the team there at the weekend. Uh, I think we were looking at their after the average age of the whole team was 24. So uh, myself and Ryan Price were the oldest two on the, on the pitch. So um, yeah, it's very positive in fairness and for the boys to perform well as well at that age and it give them great confidence going into the next couple of rounds. No, great stuff. No, it was a, a super skill performance and, and a great win to kick off the championship with. Um, thanks for joining us, Dave, and best of luck in the weeks and months ahead. Cheers. Thanks very much. Thank you, Karen. Access Credit Union has always been at the heart of our community through good and bad times. We want to continue to play our part in helping our community through the COVID-19 crisis. As businesses reopen, we encourage our community to work together by staying local, borrowing locally and spending locally. Access Credit Union is here to help. Welcome back to the Star Sport Podcast and as promised at the top of the show we're going to preview what's to come in this week's Southern Star Sports section and as Kieran mentioned it's absolutely jam-packed. 28 pages featuring sport from all around the region with a big focus on the return of the GAA. So Kieran, people have an idea already of what to expect but maybe just fill us in a little more. I'm going to re- repeat myself. I'm going to, be, going to be like a parrot here Jack but the fact that fans couldn't get the games just get, pick up the star this week we've all the match reports in there so you won't miss a thing that happened on the GA scene last weekend around Carberry, Muskerry and the county championships. So load of match reports from Carberry Rangers, Castlehaven, Skib Knicks, Bandon against Clyde. It's all there. Everything is there, kind of. So we're loaded with GA reports. And um, also, it's worth mentioning, too, that Conor Horahan played his part as Villa did the great escape from the um, from the Premier League relegation battle last weekend. Conor played 75-odd minutes as uh, Villa drew one all with a West Ham. And that was enough for Villa to survive relegation by one point. So we have a reaction from Conor in this week's Southern Star. Just, just hold that thought for a second, Kieran. Just him. To, to double down on Connor's influence in the last few games. He really came into his own in like the relegation battle, didn't he? Every week I was turning on live score or turning on the results pages and the assists were coming from the abandoned man. Oh, super. Like, he was superb the last couple of weeks. I think he had four assists in the last maybe five, six, seven games. And if you look at Villa's run, I think Villa took eight points from the last four games. And that was like, that's why it's called the great escape because a lot of experts and pundits had written them off saying they were gone, but they pulled it out of the fire and a big reason for that was Connor, because like we all know, um, from from set play, he is lethal. Like he's that left foot is just magic. And I seen him called the Bandon Beckham on Twitter. And if it, if it was the first time I'd heard that, and it actually kind of it actually rings a bell because um with the Bandon bullet, Phil yeah. Healy, and now, now with the Bandon Beckham in Connor Horan. But um that, that left foot is sweet. And yeah, he's, Jack Grealish um, has been getting all the plaudits, but I think um Connor deserves some of the credit for keeping the villains in the Premier League too. He does, yeah. And it's just great for Conor now that he's, he's another Premier League season to look forward to because it's been an up and down campaign for him. He's been in and out of the team. But when it mattered the most, when Villa needed leaders on the pitch, Conor stood up. and Like he always says, we, we know his story well by now. He's come up through the, through the league. So it's great to see him back in the Premier League for next season. Also this week, Jack, I've taken a look at the possible West Cork Olympians for Tokyo 2021 because the 2020 Olympics should have started this week, or sorry, last week. We're a year out from the from the next Olympics, so fingers crossed everything goes well. So I'm just going through all our possible Olympians from Phil Healy to the other events to Christina Desmond, and there's a, a litany of roars in with a chance of of getting into the Olympics next year. So that's worth checking out as well. And my last word column this week is actually on the Skibreen footballers, um, just on on the transition that that team has undergone and is undergoing and how they can benefit in the Senior A Football Championship this year. So 
loads in there. Like we said, now 28 pages of top class local sports coverage. So everyone, know, everyone knows what they need to do on Thursday morning. Either pick it up in a shop or get it online because you need your daily dose of Southern Star this week. Yeah, and as Kieran mentioned, if you can't make it at the shops, do go online and subscribe to the digital edition. Just go to www.southernstar.ie forward slash e-paper and you can read the Southern Star for less than two euro per week. It's an absolute bargain. That's all we have time for this week. Thanks for listening to the Star Sport Podcast. We'll be back at the same time next week. If you enjoy these shows, please make sure to rate, review and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Slong of all. Access Credit Union has always been at the heart of our community through good and bad times. We want to continue to play our part in helping our community through the COVID-19 crisis. As businesses reopen, we encourage our community to work together by staying local, borrowing locally and spending locally. Access Credit Union is here to help.